Hey y'all, Rick Fairless, Jokers Dallas. This beautiful chopper here is a bike we built a few years ago for my hamster brother, Doug Robinson, out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Mr. Robinson is gracious enough to let me keep the bike uh, most of the year to display, ride around a little bit, which I'm going to do today. But before I go for a ride, I just want to show you this bike. So the first thing you notice is the crazy paint. Well, Mr. Robinson is retired and he plays in a band and that's one of his passions in life is playing in a band. So he loves music. Here's actually a picture big of Mr. Robinson in the band. And I wanted to do a musical theme bike that meant something to him. And he told me that one of his favorite songs is While My Guitar Gently Weeps, which I have here on the gas tank, kind of psychedelic looking. And uh, also, this is his dad, Keith. Funny story. When, when uh, Lena and I delivered the bike... Who? Biggin. Biggin and I delivered the bike to, to Doug Robinson. My hamster brother, well, his actual brother, Pete, is a hamster too, so Pete was there. So we're going over the bike, and I said, did you notice I got your dad, y'all's dad, on the gas tank? His brother started crying, Pete started crying. And uh, so then he dries up, we're going over some more of the stuff, and Doug said, what do you call this bike, Rick? And I said, I call this bike Betty. Pete started crying and crying again because that's their mother's name. And I told Doug, I said, you need to go give your brother a hug. So it was, it was a very emotional moment for the Robinson brothers as well as it was for me and Biggie. I think we all about started boohooing. Yeah, I mean, it's just, that's the cool part. So also notice these rocker covers, Biggie. So those rocker covers are solid brass rocker covers that I had custom built in England. Once I got them and we fitted them on there, I sent them to uh, an engraver in Northern California to engrave, and he engraved those for me and did an awesome job, and then I also used a, uh, an engraver in Canada to help me do some stuff too. If you notice, like here, Biggin, you got the guitar pick from from uh, Martin and Company. You remember this thing, y'all? You older people will. On a 45 record, this was a little centerpiece that you know that you put in the hole to make it into uh, you know where it could play on the record player. But anyway, you see the bike; it's really cool. Like on the front wheel, you see how I have on the front and the rear wheel. I have names of different artists muddy waters janice joplin etta james but if you look here it says quinella quinell that's one of his dogs in with the rock and roll stars music legends i put in the names of his dogs because he loves his dogs and it's just things like that one of my favorite things let me show you bigger <coughs> this side baby <laughs> His wife's name is Patty Robinson, but on her Facebook she goes by P. Rob, so I put the heart with P. Rob on there. Do you have Henry Standing Bear on here? No, this was we built this before before, before Henry Standing Bear was born. But just things like that. If notice the engraving here on the speedometer, big in it's Janice Joplin. That's pure talent, isn't it? No, the guy's awesome. Okay, so. Uh, in, in other words, this is just a really badass chopper that I'm extremely proud of, and I'm extremely, eternally grateful to Mr. Robinson, my hamster brother, for allowing me to not only display the bike, but to be able to, to take it out and exercise it too, which I'm going to do now. So, I'm going to sign off on this. And I'll sign back on in just a minute, going down the road, and Biggin, you can go. Poor old Biggin. You got two kids. You got to go pick the kids up from school. You could have done this earlier. Nah. You know what my favorite part about this bike is? What? The gas cap. The, it reminds the me of your mom. 
the whole door knob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's just cool. So anyway, so I'm gonna take uh, the baby chopper out for a ride and I'll see you in just a second. Bye. Okay, there it is. It looks like it's in about the right position. You think so? Okay. Is it recording? Hi, Megan. Okay. Gas on. That's the thing about this bike, it just runs so dang good. Ah, how you doing? Hi Keith, let's go for a ride, brother. I don't know if my glasses are on crooked or my head's on crooked. All right, I'll be back. I'll be back, Megan. I think my speedo needs a little work on here, Mr. Robinson. I'm going to take care of that. Okay, they're working on the road over here. Got a little, little sore spot they're trying to iron out. That's much better. Okay, so here we are on Harry Hines. Speed on, sister. Hell ain't half full. Drive like a nut. You know, have you ever noticed that people that drive slower than you are idiots and people that drive faster than you are maniacs? <laughs> Probably the nuts between the handlebars. Hey, that's me. <laughs> I think we got an epidemic with people on their cell phones while they're driving. And I ain't one of them. Okay, sometimes. Every now and then. Even Tom Landry lost a football game every year or two, but not to the Eagles, that's for damn sure. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Doug. I got a buddy named Jeff Zelinsky that's from Philadelphia, loves him. Scoundrel Eagles, and we did a custom bike for my buddy. 
Doug Ritchie, he's in New Jersey, but he loves them Eagles too. <coughs> well, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I don't love the Eagles. Okay. Okay, so here we go. This is, uh, see, when I was a kid, this used to be, it's what they call the circle. And you know those big, what do they call them now, roundabouts or something? It was a big circular deal with highways coming on and coming off. I mean, it was a, it was a dangerous intersection. But this area was called the Circle, so you had the Circle Motel, and the Circle Bowling Alley, and the Circle Theater, and the Circle Beer Joint, the Circle Gas Station. You know, it was just kind of a, a big intersection, and they, they finally tore that out. It's the corner of Harry Hines and Northwest Highway. So right up here, about a quarter of a mile on the left, was Allen's Blackhawk Club that my Uncle Allen and my Aunt Phyllis started. And then when Phyllis got a divorce, my mom was part owner of that thing for a while. And uh, so, you know, my mom was in the beer joint business for years. She'd say, come up to the Blackhawk tonight, come up to the Blackhawk. And I'd say, no, 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 no. I'm not coming up there because you'll drag me on the dance floor. And she'll say, you don't even know how to dance. And I'll say, that's why I don't want to be drug on the dance floor. I don't want to dance with you, she'd say. And I'd say, okay, I'll come up there. I'll come up there and she'd drag me on that damn dance floor. Oh, I told you I don't know how to dance. I'm going to teach you to dance. Okay, okay, okay. Drove me crazy. So I used to clean up that bar. Like when I, before I would go to work, you know, I always went to work early, so the bar closed at 2, so I'd be there at 2 a.m. to clean the bar for a couple hours every morning before I went to, uh, to Roach Paint. My brother helped me clean it for a while, my wife helped me clean it for a while, and it was, uh, so it was, uh, it was a rough and tough country and western bar, cowboy bar, and believe it or not, in the 70s, it had shag carpet. So it was dirty, nasty, people puking on it. Boys coming in there with the boots on and dragging mud all in there. It was a mess. So they had the jukebox, so me and my brother would always play the jukebox. So I would play the Beatles or the Stones or Bob Seger and he would play the Bee Gees, you know, this was during the disco thing. He would play the Bee Gees. Seemed like about 800 years ago. Oh, it was! Okay, so this is, uh, like I said, this is Northwest Highway now, which runs Northwest Dallas. Get it? Northwest Highway. What about if you go in the other way? It's Southeast Highway. Nah. No, it's still Northwest. You're just going the wrong way. Okay. So that was a popular restaurant called Humperdinks, and now it's closed. I wonder if the COVID got them or what got them. It was there for years. <coughs> So I'm going to ease over into this left lane. So forever there was a bar up here on the left called the Old Top Rail. And it was right there where it says uh, bar billiards. It was right there. And it was a tough place, man. It was tough. I mean, the Black Hawk Club was tough, but this place was over-the-top tough. They didn't mess around in there, so one day I rode my Harley up there and about had to fight my way out of there because my hair was long and I was riding a Harley and what are you doing in here and you don't belong in here and you need to be over in a disco or something and... I'm all about peace and love, but I wasn't about to take a bunch of crap off of a bunch of goat ropers. So, 
I took a bunch of crap off the goat ropers and I left because I was outnumbered. It's like that Bob Seger song. You walk into a restaurant strung out from the cold. You can feel the eyes upon you. You just want to explode. Most times you can't hear them talk. Other times you can. It's always the same old cliche. Is that a woman or a man? I've lived that, buddy. That's the thing about Bob Seger's music is he writes about stuff he has lived and, and a lot of us, including Rick Perlis, has lived that. So there's a big gun range right over here and when we were filming uh, Ma's Roadhouse, we did, a, we did an episode out there at the gun range. I took Ma out there and let her shoot anything that was moving or wasn't moving. She shot everything but me. I don't think she hit anything she was aiming at, so I guess it's okay. <coughs> okay, so this is the way I go home every day, by the way. I just live like seven miles from work, so I don't even have to get on the freeway. Why do they call it a freeway? It ain't free. I got tax dollars in that freeway. Why don't they call it a payway? Oh no, that's a drugstore. No, that's a... That's a... Uh, oh, who cares what it is? You're just an old man rambling at this point. Okay? So this is the part of Irving that they call Las Colinas, which means the hills. So they're building all these fancy new apartments over here. So when I come home at 6.30, there's all these young, beautiful people, well, young people, out walking their dogs. Okay, so we're going to go right here on O'Connor. Little known factoid, my mom's maiden name was Connor. C-O-N-N-E-R. Another little known factoid, my mom's first name is Sharon. She never liked that name. So when she moved to Arizona to be a bartender, and uh, my mom was kind of a free spirit, if you, if you didn't know that. She's kind of a hippie soul. She moved to Arizona for a while and worked in a bar, and everybody called her Roxy. And I'd say, why don't you want to be called, why, how come you, they call you Roxy? I like that name. Yeah, well, that ain't your name. Your name is Sharon. No, I don't like that name. So that's why when she was there at the bar, she had everybody call her mom. People say, hey, Rick, I was talking to mom the other day, and I'd say, your mom or my mom? Uh, your mom. Okay, yeah. No telling what she said, but go ahead. So that's the Omni Hotel over there, which is like a high-polluting something or other. I don't know what. Right down here is a Toyota Music Factory, which is pretty cool. They have live music and lots of restaurants and a movie theater. Have I mentioned I love my Toyota Tundra from Toyota of Irving? This episode of Riding with Rick is from Toyota of Irving. It's your place. Okay, got that out the way. I do love my Toyota, by the way. Okay, so when you're riding the motorcycle, you got to be looking out for all of these. Look at that guy. Pull out there, Pop. I ain't going to hurt you. If I had a gun, I might. If I had a gun, yeah. You couldn't have waited eight seconds and made your U-turn? Nope. Got to pull in front of the chopper. So, this is, like I said, this is the part of town where I live. I just live right around the corner. And I ain't going to take you over there, because then you're going to want to move in with me. And unless your name's Pam Anderson, you ain't moving in with me. Well, maybe if your name is, uh, what's the pretty girl's name from Friends? Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Maybe you can move in with me, because you, you old like me. How you doing, pal? 
Always wave to other motorcyclists and chicks. That's who I wave to. So this is the Las Colinas Country Club over there. I used to be a member and then they made me mad and I quit. So now I'm a member at the Four Seasons again. And if they make me mad, I'll quit them too. I quit them once and went to Las Colinas. They made me mad and I quit them and went back to Four Seasons. It's hard to make me mad. You know, the problem is when you're an old man like me and I'm, I'm fixing to be 65 and I know that's not real old but it's not real young either. You've just seen almost everything and experienced almost everything so when there's some disrespect you know if you go in some place or if I go in some place with my wife or anybody or by myself and they look at me with my long hair and my beard and my tie-dye shirt and my Chuck Taylors and they assume I'm just some ne'er-do-well and then they judge me in like two seconds and then they want to treat me uh, the way that no person should be treated well, it does make me mad it, it'd make you mad it'd make anybody mad you know you, you shouldn't judge <laughs> hey I did that on purpose that's a hardtail did I mention this bike's a hardtail okay so we're at the corner of O'Connor and Rochelle my wife and I we got married in 79 we lived in a rent house over in South Irving and I came home one day and she said we're moving and I said what do you mean we're moving she said I'm sick of living in this old house I rented this a, an apartment so right over here is a fancy apartment complex or it was fancy 40 years ago and we moved in there and uh, you know what I said when she said we're moving okay that's why me and my wife get along so good she says jump and I say how high honey whatever she wants to do is okay with me I don't care happy life happy happy wife happy life just like you know somebody said something about years ago about you know if you do this you can make a lot more money and I told the guy I said hey I didn't get into I didn't say hey I'm a I didn't tell my mom and my pa hey I'm gonna get in the motorcycle business so I can make a lot of money I got into the motorcycle business because I love motorcycles I mean that's the driving thing to me there's lots of people that make a lot more money than me but I don't know that there's anybody any happier than me you know and and you, I don't know if you know it or not but I do uh, motivational speaking a loud Mustang I'm gonna put a sticker on there that says not fast just loud I hate those things and uh, you know if you enjoy what you do for a living say you work 40 hours a week well that's a pretty good chunk there Jack and if you're unhappy doing that that's that makes for a miserable life you know you need to do something you enjoy even if you make less money you know if you enjoy what you do for a living that's awesome I'm telling you I've basically had two jobs in my life working for for Roach Paint and then Glidden that's one job in the paint business and I loved it and the only reason I retired from there was I had 20 years in I was eligible for retirement and I thought I wanted to try my hand in the motorcycle business you know and I never thought about how much money can I make never entered my mind never entered my mind that's why I'm probably pretty much an idiot I just do things that make me happy you know I mean there's things about the job about every job that people don't like I love riding this bike by the way but if you if you love your job for the most part I'm telling you brother it's a wonderful thing so you don't have to look look past the money part of it 
you'll adjust to how much money you make. But if you love what you do for a living, you will do a better job at it and you will make more money. You know, I tell people all the time, as long as I make enough money to keep my wife happy, I'm happy. You know, I mess around with motorcycles all day. Look what am I doing right now. I'm riding, to me, one of the coolest motorcycles on the planet. Well, guess what? That's my job. I'm talking to you, my pals, and I'm riding one of the coolest motorcycles on the planet that belongs to a brother of mine. This is awesome. You know, so if you can, if you can, if you can work a little harder and work a little smarter and be a little nicer and be a little kinder, you know, just, just try to try to enjoy life. Peace, love, and motorcycles, man. That's what I love. When I worked for the paint business, I loved it. And I did a good job at it. I was the number one sales rep in the country out of a thousand sales reps. Yes, it was a job. And yes, there was days that I just wanted to bang my head against the wall. I probably did bang my head against the wall a few times. And yes, I had a bunch of bosses over me. They would say, do this, do that. Can't you read the signs, you know? Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? And I would do it. Sometimes. Sometimes I didn't do it. Sometimes I did what I wanted to do. But I was a hard worker and I was successful. And you can be too. Say you work at Coca-Cola, Sean Phillips. You work there and say there's 10 people in the company that do what you do then your goal is to be the best of those ten. You get to be the best of those ten and they're going to move you up the ladder and pay you more money. Then you say, okay, now I'm doing this job. Who else is doing this job? I want to do the, this job so good that they are knocking on my door trying to get me to move up the ladder. Uh-oh, somebody done run over something. That ain't no good there, buddy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, that's no good. Have I mentioned the Irving Police Department late lately? Irving Police Department, which, by the way, is right up here on the right, has the finest officers I've ever seen. I mean, the Irving Police Department is like a well-oiled machine. They do awesome. Hey, he's one of my motorcycle brothers. They do awesome, and I've had lots of interactions with them over the years, and they've always been, been great. They've always been great to me. Uh, yeah, I was young and stupid before, and yeah, I've been in jail a couple times when I was a kid, believe it or not. But you know what? This is because I deserved it because I racked up a bunch of tickets and then I thought I was too much of a big shot to pay them. Oh, by the way, I was 16. I used to be the wheelie, wheelie king of Irving, Texas. I could wheelie my Honda 100 from here to Houston until I ran out of gas. Well, they frown upon that because it's, it's a safety hazard. So I got a few tickets for wheeling and a few tickets for racing and a few tickets for not stopping when I should have... You know, regular teenage dumbass stuff. But the Irving Police Department, those guys are awesome. They are awesome. So these are like city buildings over here. Irving Fire Department. See, this used to be where the jailhouse was. If you pulled up in there, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. That means you're being an idiot. So I'm going to work y'all around. We're going to go down here. And we're just riding around my hometown, Irving, Texas. Okay? And I'm going to show you a couple of things. See what you think. We're at the corner of Rock Island and MacArthur. Named after Douglas MacArthur. World War II. That was the big one, you know. The big one. WW2. 
Can you imagine going to war or these poor American soldiers that are fighting war now in a foreign country? Oh my God. What do you, I mean, I get it. I get it. Those guys are, they're young and their country's calling them and they're doing, they're doing what their country is dictating. But when they say war is hell, it is hell. And the, the people fighting our wars are, are young people. And you can't say enough good things about those young people. You know, they're, they're the best. They're laying their lives on the line, the, the, the men and women in the armed forces. There's a cop behind me. <laughs> 65 years old almost, and I still get nervous when a cop pulls behind me. Okay. Why do you get nervous when a cop pulls behind you? Well, I don't know. Sometimes I've been pulled over in my motorcycle and in my truck because they want to see my car or my, or my motorcycle. One time I got pulled over going to work and I was in Dallas and I was in my crazy 69 C10 and the cop said, "Where you?" he said, how much you had to drink? It's like 2 o'clock in the morning, I was heading to work. He said, how much you had to drink? And I said, none. He said, none. And I said, no, sir. He said, where you headed? I said, to work. Where you work? I own Strokers, Dallas. That's the place on Harry Hines? Yes, sir. No. No, you ain't going to work this early at 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, I think you've been out drinking. And I said, my hair is wet. I got out of the shower 15 minutes ago. I'm headed to work. <laughs> so I showed him a business card and he Googled my name and saw my picture and patted me on the back and said he was going to come by and visit me someday. It was very nice, you know, but when you pull somebody over at 2 o'clock in the morning, I get it. You got to be cautious. You don't know if they're friend or foe. Okay, so right up here, this is South Irving. I've lived in North Irving, South Irving, East Irving, and West Irving. Right now I live in Northwest Irving. Okay, so right up here is 4th Street. We're gonna go down, I used to live right over there. We're gonna go right up here to 5th Street and I'm gonna show you a house. Don't pull over on top of me, sister. I got some living to do. I ain't done. I might be in the fourth quarter, but I ain't done yet, baby. I'm going to show you 2515. West 5th. Right there. So this, let me turn this motor pickle off. My dad used to call them motor pickles. He'd say, you boys gonna ride them motor pickles to school today? So this, 2515 West 5th, is where Lee Harvey Oswald was staying when he killed Kennedy. November 22nd, 1963. So the story is, story is, his wife Marina Oswald was working with a lady, and I think they got her name, the city of Irving bought this house. Uh, Ruth Payne, I think was her name. Yeah, Payne. Ruth Payne lived here and she was working with Marina Oswald and so Sorry I breathe so loud. I got asthma in case you didn't know. Uh, Marina and Lee Harvey were separated. They, you know, they were living in two different places. So, But he used to come over here and stay with her trying to rekindle the deal. And uh, so when he killed 
Kennedy, she was here and he had been staying over here. So inside they have it decorated just like it was on November 22nd, 1963. Listed in the National Register of Historic Places by the United States Department of the Interior. So, kind of a historic place, don't you think? I wish you'd look at that chopper. Man, that stuff like that, like that chopper there, just keeps me up at night. Look how beautiful that thing is. It's just incredible. And the thing is, when we build a chopper, brother, you can ride it. It's going to it's gonna run as good as it looks. See the microphone and the music note on the sissy bar? The brass, the sugar bear front end. I just tickle myself when I get to build a bike like this. And we got a couple more that we're starting to build now. See how I painted the oil tank as a, as a radio? And obviously, most of you know my painter is uh, Gary Queen with his airbrush artist Tim, uh, Tim Murphy and Mike Sissel. Both those guys are incredible. Gary's uh, youngest son Trey works with him. Johnny works with him. And they just, those guys are awesome. They're awesome. Gary Queen's the second hardest working guy I know behind me. Look at that. See how we did the exhaust like that? Why'd you do them like that, Fairless? Because I ain't seen it done before. That's why I did that. Yeah, now this, this spot could keep you up at night thinking about it. See what I did here? I did the Gemini uh, NASA moon deal there see what I did on the on the cover there petticoat junction why eh, I don't know popped into my mind so when when I was a kid and even when I lived around the corner on West 7th my dad used to tell me that Lee Harvey Oswald lived around here somewhere and when they first opened that Lee Harvey, the uh, sixth floor museum downtown where Oswald killed Kennedy. The, uh, we went in there with, it was a Sunday and it was just me and Biggin. We went in there and Biggin's like eight or ten or six or something. And she said, Dad, 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 look. And it was a piece of paper and it had 2515 West 5th on it as an address Lee Harvey had given. And so we couldn't wait to come home, and we, we just lived around the corner. I'll ride you over there. We pulled up here, and there was somebody mowing the lawn, and Biggins just mesmerized. She said, Dad, do you think that's one of Lee Harvey Oswald's relatives? No, Biggin. Dad, do you think he knows that the, Lee Harvey used to live here? And I said, well, I'm sure. I'm sure he does. Okay, so let me take you around the corner to where I used to live, and then we'll head back to work. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm gonna do that. Do that. See how nice this bike starts. She's a runner too, buddy. So years ago, I run you down this little street. My buddy Terry Penn was building some houses, and he said, I'm going to build 14 houses on a little street, and I'm going to call it Crystal Court. This is Crystal Court. Before he ever built the house, he said, pick one out. I'll build it how you want it. So I picked out this one on the end. So this was, I had this house built years ago how many years ago would it have been 35 years ago and we put a basketball goal up here in the corner and my kids used to ride the little Yamaha here in the cul-de-sac those houses back there they weren't there 
So it's pretty cool because everybody that lived here was in their late 20s and 30s, a few old people in their 40s. And so it was like, you know, we'd have cookouts and all that here. It was pretty cool. <coughs> it was a pretty cool place to live. Okay, make sure ain't nobody, no Mustang, loud Mustang coming down here that wants to run over me. See, I don't ride fast. I ride cool. Or so I think. Huh. Or at least in my own mind, right? Okay, so we're back on story. And we're going to turn left up here. Going to turn left. Uh oh, here comes the fire wagon. Let me get out your way, mister. I don't want to impede no safety missions. So this is 6th Street. It's a G-Man, a government man. Always wave to the government men, the G-Men and women. Where you going there, sister? Hey, how did I know it was a was a girl driving? Okay, so I raised my kids. There's a cool old classic, but I can't see it close enough to tell what it is. I raised my kids over here on 7th Street and I sold it and the people I sold it to did a bunch of remodeling but now I think it's sitting empty and I went in there one day yeah so this is where I raised my kids 1712 West 7 so this was a gravel driveway so I'd pull my truck down here and the kids would be out there on a the trampoline and Biggin would come run up there and I'd say hold on Biggin hold on hold on and she'd run up and I'd open the door and she'd hug me so tight so they remodeled it and made it fancier than when old broke broke boy Rick Fairless owned it but I had three acres this was this shop here was my shop and they uh, they made it into a mother-in-law house or something. And then I had a little barn back there. They tore it down and built a bigger barn and built that kind of another mother-in-law house, I guess. And then see where the fence is and that house is back there? That was my land too. So that was a whole nother acre of land. But 8th Street dead ends into that. And 8th Street didn't want me to build anything back there so I promised them I wouldn't so when I sold it it was three acres and I used to mow it and the kids learned to ride their motorcycles all out through there but yeah this is this was our home for I don't know over 10 years yeah so this was a cool place to live too How's that chopper do on the gravel? Don't worry about it, Jack. You just load the wagon. Don't worry about the mules. I mowed this yard 8,000 times. I remember one of the proudest days of my life was I went out to Sears and I bought a, a Craftsman riding mower. I was so proud. Because before that, I just had a a regular mower. My cousin Deanna was down from California and I said, come on, we're going to Sears. What you gonna buy, Brother Rick? I said, I'm gonna buy me a riding lawnmower, a Craftsman. And I did. 
I wore that thing out mowing that yard. So yeah, this is South Irving and I've lived here in North Irving and now I'm back in North Irving. But I love me some South Irving too. Okay, so we're gonna go down. Where you wanna go? Well, I don't wanna go in front of them. I can tell by the way that guy's got his head to one side and chomping on a toothpick, he'll run over me. Probably him too, hey brother. Why'd you somebody drop their Cheetos, pigs? I want to keep my city clean, buddy. We got a swell mayor here in Irving, Texas, Rick and Melanie Stouffer. And yes, I said Rick and Melanie. She's his wife, and I think she's, she's the head boss. Don't mess with the mayor's wife. The mayor's got to be nice to you. His wife don't. We love her. <laughs> we love both of them. They're awesome. You're always worried that guys in these cars like that don't see you. That's why you have to drive defensively. And keep in mind, you're not thinking about it all the time. I mean, you are, but it's just running in the back of your mind. You're just, you're just, uh, it's just automatic. It's just automatic. So this is Shady Grove. My very first apartments I ever lived in. The very first anything I ever lived in when I moved out. My mom rented me and me and my brother an apartment. It was right over here. I'll show you. Back then, it used to be called the Shady Grove Apartments. That's him right there. Now I think it's called Sunrise or something. Yeah. So we lived right there at the end. Me and my brother. Right, Rand. My brother's name is Randy. We just call him Rand. Rick and Ran. Used to meet Ricky and Randy, now it's Rick and Ran. Yeah, they've they've made a lot of improvements in in Irving and in every little city around DFW. They've grown and grown and grown. Now pretty much it's Dallas-Fort Worth all the way to the Red River up there. So, yeah, back talking about being what you want to be. If you have a job and you're working for somebody, be the best. If you're the best, you're going to make more money and you're going to be happier. You're going to enjoy it more. If you want another position, or you want another job, go get it, brother. But don't switch jobs just to switch jobs. Don't switch switch jobs for a buck an hour, because that ain't gonna last long. You wanna switch careers. You wanna find a career, not just a job. Yes, it's hard work, I ain't kidding either, it is. But ain't nothing free. And ain't nothing worth having easy. Makes it easy to move your feet. Somebody, I gave a tour today to some people and they were looking at my bagger Grace with all the different custom paint. Each piece is custom painted. And he said, how in the world did you come up with that? And I said, I don't know. And he said, look at all these bikes. We're in the conference room with a picture of all the bikes. He said, who helped you with all these design ideas? And I said, nobody. He said, how do you come up with it? And I said, the designs and the ideas are easy. I got loads of them. You know, it's just the time and the money to do everything. I got enough ideas to last me the rest of my life and last my kids the rest of their lives. Not that they want my ideas, they probably don't. But yeah, it's, uh, Irving is a good town, friendly town. Hey, it's a garage sale. I haven't been to a garage sale in 
I bet I've only been to like two in my whole life and I didn't like them, so I didn't go back. What about a state sale? That's a fancy garage sale. Okay. Now, if I'm out in the country somewhere, eh, and I see an old car or an old pickup truck that's cool, yeah, I might stop. I might stop and see if they want to sell that. Kind of like they do on TV. Okay, so this is Shady Grove and Nursery. So when I was born, and I've taken you all over there before. Remember, it's just me and you right, right down there. There's some old, I guess it was the forerunner to apartments where we lived when I was born. And they're still there. 65 years later, no telling how old they were when I lived there. Because my mom was 17 when I was born. A year later, no, 11 months later, my brother was born. So, I've told you many times, my brother and I are 11 months apart. So, in a week, my brother will be 64. And so for a month, from August 31st to September 28th, we're the same age. And then, and then I turn a year older. So for one month a year, my brother and I are the same age. So my brother is my best friend, my brother, and my attorney. And he's one of the top attorneys in the country. He does personal injury law. Now, he ain't going to represent, it, represent you if you, if you uh, twisted your ankle on a anthill. He does, he does big stuff. Big, big, big. So there's Urban Golf Club, which is pretty cool. If you've never played there, they redid it. Pretty nice. See all that property out there? Trinity River runs through there. And actually, we're fixing to go over the Trinity River. That's kind of when you go from Irving to Dallas is when you cross the river. When I was a kid, you couldn't buy beer in Irving. You had to go across the river. Well, right up here is the river. They're gonna build. Uh, they're gonna build a bunch of. Uh, look how pretty it is. They're gonna build a bunch of. Uh, make this into a park out there. See, they've already got a a little roadway, a jogging trail through there. I don't know if you can see it, but downtown Dallas is there. So we just went over the river back there. So now we're in Dallas. Went from Irving to Dallas, right there. You know, people ask me all the time, you know, how did I get started in this business? Well, I got started in this business as a, as a dream. You know, when I thought I wanted to open a motorcycle shop, I didn't think I could do it. But I had the idea, so I thought, well, I'll, ex I'll explore it. And I did. And I run into roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And a bunch of times I almost gave up on my dream. But I didn't. I didn't give up. You know, I knew that I could always go back to work for Glidden, for Sherwin-Williams, or Kelly Moore, or any of those guys, any of the big paint companies, I knew I could always go back to work and pick right up where I left off. But 
I wanted to try. I wanted to try it. Here's a little Rick Fairless factoid. You know how old I was when I opened my first motorcycle, my first, my only motorcycle shop? 39. When I started, when I started the process, I was 39 years old. And it was a ton of work. But I wanted the beer joint too. Just be happy with the motorcycle shop. Be happy with the motorcycle shop. I ain't happy with the motorcycle shop. I mean, I'm happy with it, but not just that. I'm like the big boy in the, in the line at the buffet. I want more stuff on my plate. I wanted a beer joint because people are only going to go to a motorcycle shop Oh, they need some parts, or oh, they hadn't been there in a while, or oh, they want to come look at some used bikes. But if you got a beer joint and you do it right, they're going to come back a lot more often. Some of them every month, some of them once a week, some of them every day. God bless them, everyone. Got to slow down up here because this is pretty rough railroad tracks. Make sure that guy sees me. Okay, he sees me. We good. We good. So I'm going to slow down over these rough-ass tracks. Oh, these ain't too bad. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad. I'm telling you, these quick trips, I love those quick trips because they do a great job. That guy's got his flashers on, so I'm going to go around that, that guy, that big truck. So hopefully I can get over there. I'm going to go right up here in front of this guy so he knows that I'm coming over there. So I don't get killed. I don't want to be killed out here on the highway on Mr. Robinson's bike. He'll never speak to me again. Hey, wait a minute. Nobody would ever speak to me again, especially my wife and kids. Hey, today is my grandpa's birthday. My grandpa's name is Dick Fairless, and he was born in 1909, and he died in 1977, and my brother and I will tell you that he's the greatest man we ever knew. He was unbelievable. What do you got going on here? Probably run out of gas right mid-turn. He loved his grandkids, me and my brother Randy and my cousin Deanna, all of his grandkids. He was just such a nice man and he taught, our grandpa taught me and my brother how to be men. When he died, I was just turned 21 and my brother had just turned 20. And my dad O.C. helped us, and my grandpa, Dick Fairless, helped us. So there was two good men <coughs> that helped us become who we are today. And my dad, O.C. Draper, is still teaching me and my brother and all of our family. He's still the patriarch of our, of our family. Okay. So here we are at 35. So when I was a kid, they used to have, uh, this is 35E. They used to have stickers that said, uh, a lot of people had stickers on their car that said, I love New York, you know, I heart New York. And the other people's stickers would say, I love New, oh, you love New York, take 35E North. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that guy. It's a pretty nice bike you got there. Hopefully you're going to Rick Fairless's place to spend some money. He don't want to look at me because he won't be cool. It's okay. It's all right, brother. 
You got camo pants on like me. It's okay. See, that's the thing is I don't try to be the tough guy on a motorcycle. I don't want to be a tough guy. I want to be a nice guy. And if you if you pull up next to somebody else on a motorcycle, won't kill you to nod your head to them, wave to them. How you doing, brother? Pull out in front of me, you fool. I always acknowledge other motorcyclists, and I don't care what kind of bike they're on. Doesn't matter to me. By the way, this is Regal Row. I hate this road. Bumpier than a wagon trail. Remember that Chisholm Trail? I think this is it. Come on, pal, don't worry about me. Light's green. <laughs> so this is back on Harry Hines. A lot of hospitals down the street. Southwest Airlines is right around the corner. God loves Southwest Airlines. Okay, we're going to turn left here. Welcome to my house. Hey, there's my Toyota Tundra. Ain't she pretty? That's my buddy. I think his name is Chris. He's he owns the Big Ridge Plumbing. You get square. Hi, Jim. I'm fixing to send Gary to Arizona. Did you get square? You get the truck trailer. It won't start. What won't? The dually. Why won't it start? The batteries are dead, dead. Okay, you know what to do. Jerry's back here getting the batteries out. I gave him Robbie's credit card to go get new batteries. Okay. 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 How are you? Okay. How's the big wrench? <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? Big wrench plumbing? Doing good, yes sir. Good. How you been? How was your week? It's good, it's good. There you go. I don't know why I pulled back here. I was going to pull in on the other side and I forgot. Well, you just like riding. Right? Yeah, I just like riding. See you, pal. So great. I'm glad he came in to test the, make sure the Dodge runs. I don't hardly ever drive that Dodge. I got a Dodge Dually. I got a Chevrolet Dually, a Dodge Dually, and a Ford Dually. And a Dodge Dually we only use for long hauls. Hi, Patty! That's Poncho's wife, Patty. She's hard working like her husband. Hey, I want to show you Charlie. See that abstract motorcycle I put up there? Can you see that? Isn't that cool looking? I had a friend named uh, Chris Todd build that for me. Pretty cool. At night I got a red light in there and it comes on automatically. Okay, I'm gonna pull this into Punch Wally Garage. Thank you for riding along with me. Hi, Punch Wally. Hit that gate, boys! Or... Not. Okay. They can't hear me. I'm going to turn the gas off. So, this is the Betty Chopper. Runs great, looks great. Back here in Punchwally Garage. So I'm signing off. This is Rick Fairless saying I'll see you later. And in the meantime, I'm going to push this in. 
I don't know where all my goons are. Yes, I said goons. So I'm going to pull the Betty Chopper up here beside my Susie Chopper. You notice the seat is off of Susie because I'm getting the seat redone. Hi Felicia. Bye Felicia. That's Rocky's little Yamaha 50. Pearl's little Yamaha 50 with training wheels. That's what I uh, taught their mother how to ride on and what I taught them how to ride on. Oh, there's one of my goons. See that white building over there? Southwest Airlines. Love me some Southwest Airlines. Okay. Let's go find Bessler. Back through, these are all bikes in service. Hi, Craig. Hello. Going in the air conditioner, I don't care. <laughs> you getting batteries for the Dodge? Somebody getting batteries for the truck? Oh, I thought he said Jared was getting batteries for the truck. Gerald. Oh, Gerald. Gerald. Why didn't he just say goon? That goon. These are Mr. Barnett's bikes. Take care of Mr. Barnett. He's like Mr. Robinson. Hi, pal. You know I paid extra for that light there. What? This light. See, I paid extra so you could have lights to see. Give me fix up, will you? Bessler, I'm signing off. Right. This is Bessler.